Results from Togo's April 29th election for parliamentary and regional representatives have been announced with the ruling Union for the Republic Party winning 108 out of 113 seats in parliament. This could pave the way for the implementation of a controversial constitutional reform adopted last month, which allows the parliament to elect the president as opposed to a direct election by voters. Gilbert Bawara is the Togolese Minister for Civil Service, Labor and Social Dialogue. He tells me the results show that the ruling party won an overwhelming victory. The result is that uh, the majority in here has uh, obtained 108, over 113. It means almost we have an overwhelming majority at the National Assembly. I was speaking to an opposition person uh, who said that uh, the turnout was low and also that... Uh, 61% is not low compared to the other countries around Togo. I would like to remind that uh, the last legislative elections in Benin, the rate was uh, 37 or 38. And the last legislative elections in Cote d'Ivoire, it was below 40. So it means uh, the rate is, uh, is still very high in Togo. When I spoke with you, you said there were some uh, outside observers, but I was told that the government also denied some local monitors like the Episcopal Church and others from monitoring the election. Yes, but uh, when you take the Catholic Church, they had already expressed their opinion and they said they were opposed to what we were doing. So how do you expect them to become neutral and independent after having expressed their opinion? So I think when we want to have something very credible, we have also to be very fair in how we select the observers. So Gilbert, now that you have won the election, what's next? Yeah, we will continue to run the country, taking into consideration the interests of the population. But we will also be listening to the opinion of uh, everyone, including the political actors. It is not because we have an overwhelming majority that we will stop uh, dialoguing and uh, listening to the citizens and to the all the components of the society. For the sake of the country, we have to continue working with uh, some openness. I guess what I was asking therefore is that the, there was a controversy going into the election about the new constitution. What happens now to that constitution? Does that mean that President Fodna Simba now will continue or will be elected by the parliament? <laughs> First of all, we have uh, just ended the election we will take time and see how we apply the new constitution. President Paul has never expressed his own uh, opinion and his uh, interest. But uh, in the party, we made the campaign indicating that we would like him to become the president of the council, the head of the government, but not the head of the state, because we will have the president of the republic who will be the head of state, who most probably will be another person. And then President Four, we would like him to become the president of the council. So it means the head of the government. But uh, for the time being, this is uh, premature. We, we don't want to discuss about that uh, before the new National Assembly is installed and the Senate is also put in place. Gilbert Bawara is the Togolese Minister for Civil Servants and Worlds and Social Dialogue. He also is a prominent member of the ruling union for the Republic. He was speaking with me from the capital, Lomé. South Sudanese peace talks between the government and the holdout groups will begin on May 10th in Nairobi, signaling a new step to end perennial disruptions to the country's rebuilding. A series of behind-the-scenes consultations that have been going on in the Kenyan capital to bring the government of South Sudan and the holdout groups to their negotiation table seems to have broken the impasse. And the Kenyan mediation could now lead to longer lasting peace. Kenya's mediation is led by former army commander Lazarus Isumbeyo, the man who also successfully mediated the 2005 Sudan Comprehensive Peace Agreement that helped set the stage for South Sudan's later independence in 2011. The majority of the holdout groups who had been reluctant at first now seem to have accepted the Kenyan-led mediation after some months of suspicion. 
These groups are called holdouts because they refused to sign on the 2018 peace deal mediated by the intergovernmental authorities on development IGAD that helped end a civil war between President Salva Kiir's government and various armed groups that splintered continually since 2013. Initially, the Catholic Church in Rome tried to bring the group back in the fold, but dialogue fell through last year. Mr. Sumbeyo recently, late last month, visited Juba and met with President Falva Kiel and later announced that the talks will begin in a few days. Several of the holdout members said that their delegates have arrived in Nairobi and are engaging with the Kenya authorities for pre-talks consultations. In January, Emmanuel Ajawin, who is also the chairperson of the National Democratic Movement Patriotic Front, NDMAPF, had indicated that they don't trust the talks being presided over by Kenya's President William Ruto. Mr. Ajawin had demanded the talks to be returned to Rome under the initiators, the Society of St. El Gidio in Rome, to first decide on whether all the parties can trust President William Ruto. Subsequently, in February, President Bhutto appointed Sumbeyo, who is highly respected in South Sudan, to lead the talks. This brought down some of the suspicions among those who did not trust President William Ruto. However, Thomas Cirillo, the leader of the National Salvation Front, NAS said that they are still consulting with the Kenyan mediation team. He did not guarantee his group's participation in the talks. NAS, the most armed of the holdout groups, has been involved in intermediate skirmishes with government forces in central equatorial. It had always believed that President Kiel has been has never been interested in negotiations, but has sustained a campaign of enticing their members to defect. NRS insists that South Sudan must embrace a federal system of government to allow greater regional autonomy that would give the citizens more access to their natural resources instead of depending on the central government, which is often the main cause of the conflict. Life lessons come one in a dozen, the other eleven give something from nothing. I sit here looking for an answer, maybe the biggest question was in the last chapter. You gave me the soul I have today, without you I never could have moved away. But now I see what you teach, I do believe I always should have stayed. Life changes just open the door. One thing's certain, I'll always be yeah. your